Hi, I'm Dave Hillowitz. So in this video, we're going to talk about everything that you need to know in order to do film composing in Ableton Live. Uh, live is, of course, something that was designed for electronic music. It's kind of a non-standard choice when it comes to uh, writing film scores, but it is possible. In fact, I just finished a feature film, um, and yeah, every cue was written in Ableton Live. Okay, let's get started. So I've spent 20 minutes uh, shooting a very short, very low quality uh, film sequence for us to work with in this video. Um, yeah, check it out. This is what we're going to be scoring. Basically, it's a man walks into a room holding a box. He puts the box down. He opens it up to reveal some photo slides. He sits down and he starts looking at the slides one by one. So yeah, that's it. Uh, really um, earth shattering. Okay, so let's bring this into Ableton. Importing video into live is super easy. You can just drag it onto the timeline. Ableton treats video files just like audio files. By the way, if you have trouble working with a video file, you may need to convert it to a format that Ableton likes better. Ableton have a help page here that explains their preferred formats. I usually don't bother though. I, I haven't had that many performance issues. Okay, I'm going to pull in the standard piano patch that I use for just about everything. So ordinarily when composing with picture, I would have notes from the director and the director would have probably uh, described the kinds of emotions that they wanted to be present in the scene. In this case, of course, I am the director and I just shot this on a whim and I have no idea what the emotional content of this music should be. So um, yeah, I guess I'm just going to play a bunch of piano chords and um, see what works. <laughs> Okay, that was fine. Uh, I'm basically going to just do that with uh, different sounds and different chords, uh, you know, about 10 times and figure out what I like the best. See you on the other side. Okay, so I've written six cues. Um, there are three that are kind of ominous, and then there are three that are kind of sentimental. Um, here's one of the ominous ones. And here's one of the sentimental ones. Okay, so I think I'm going to go with the sentimental one for no other reason than I think that I'm going to be able to show off how to sync music to picture better with that one. Okay, so let's do this. So one feature that film scoring veterans will find missing from Ableton Live is support for timecode. Uh, other software such as Logic allows you to actually switch um, the time representation to timecode so that you can actually see what you're working with, see where you are in the film. Ableton doesn't allow that. The best you can do is you get a readout with some milliseconds and you have to kind of do some mental math to figure out which frame you might be on. Um, so yeah, that's definitely a challenge. Okay, so now let's sync up some of these cuts so that the music and the picture match more closely. There are two techniques here. We can either futz with the tempo or we can add and remove beats uh, so that we're basically doing like a little time signature change in the middle of the piece. Okay, so first I'm going to turn on automation by clicking on this button here and I'm going to open up the uh, master lane at the very bottom and you can see here uh, there's a song tempo lane. So you can actually change the song's tempo just by adding points. Um, so for example, if I turn it way up, you can hear what that sounds like. Okay. So that's one way of um, changing tempo and trying to get things to line up. But there's a much, much easier way of doing that, which is to use uh, warp modes. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to turn on warp 
um, which ordinarily takes an audio file and it allows you to deform the audio file so that you change the timing of the audio. Of course, we don't want to do that because um, the video file is the source of truth for time. We, we can't change the video file. We can't change any aspect of its audio. So what we're going to do is we're going to click this little button underneath warp. We're going to turn it into a leader. So we've turned on warp, but Ableton Live is not actually going to do any warping on this clip. It's going to use uh, the warp markers that we set up in this view down here to change the tempo for everything else. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to find those cuts um, and we're going to make warp markers for them. So let's watch the video and I'm just going to kind of scrub through it. So now would be a good time to talk about the second essential film scoring tool that I think Ableton should have but doesn't, and that's kind of like a challenge. Uh, that is a marker list window. Uh, most DAWs at this point have like a marker or region list window where you can kind of see all the places in a file um, that you thought were important. And for film scoring, that's super important because it'll be things like the cuts between shots, uh, places where you need a crescendo, places where you need to like have a, a timing change. Um, you can add markers in Ableton, but there's no one window where you can see all of your markers. And even more so, uh, there's no place where you can edit things using the keyboard. You have to do everything uh, with the mouse. The same is true with tempo mapping. Uh, there's no place where you could be like, I need a tempo change at bar 38. You have to actually find that place in the timeline. Um, so yeah, definitely um, that's, that's a source of frustration for me. So that's a cut right there. So let's go into our video file and see if we can find that cut. Okay, somewhere in there. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in even more. I think that's as close as we can get. And I'm just gonna bring that there so that it's actually lined up with that beat marker. Uh, let's see what the next big cut is. That almost lines up already. Okay, it happens actually a little bit early, so let's figure that one out. We're gonna keep zooming in and I'm gonna, okay, there we go. Double click on the header up here and it creates a warp marker. And now we're gonna zoom in and I'm gonna make sure it hits right at the 3.3. Okay, so let's watch that and just make sure that the, the actual timing happens perfectly. Ooh, that lined up nicely already. So it'd be nice if that note there actually hit right when we do this transition. So let's look at that. So the actual transition's happening over here. We want this note to be over here. Uh, so we have two options, right? We can change the tempo such that this note ends up over here, um, basically slow the entire thing down, or we can add beats uh, to kind of have that moment of music take place a little bit later and match up with the picture. In my experience, uh, doing a, a tempo change is always much more noticeable, much more disruptive than adding a beat or two. Not everything needs to be in 4-4. It's actually totally fine to leave some breathing room to you know, take away a beat, add a beat, it's, it's fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to grab all of this and I'm going to move it back. Of course, now we have dead space. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to grab the previous measure and I'm going to repeat it. So we'll end up with an extra half a bar of arpeggiation right before the cut. Okay, so that's the last cut in our sequence and yeah, I feel pretty good about it. We've gone through two techniques for syncing up music. First, there was the tempo mapping, and then there was adding beats to our composition. Here's what the finished sequence sounds like from the top. Okay, it's not much, but uh, it's kind of pretty. Okay, so now our cue is done. We're ready to deliver this. Our director has asked for a stem so they can do some sort of fancy sound mixing kind of thing. Uh, so yeah, how do we do that? 
Live can export video uh, and Live can export stems. If I do all individual tracks, uh, I can hit export. And as you can see, it's output um, separate tracks for each of the tracks within the project. Ditto for video, all you do is click down here on video and hit export and it will export out a WAV file and it will export out the video. One thing to remember is when you're sending stuff to a director, make sure that you turn off the audio from the video clip that you use for scoring. Otherwise, you'll just be sending them their own audio back, which, uh, yeah, they don't want. So that's it. Live is, of course, a fantastic choice if you're uh, making electronic music, EDM, even rock music, actually. Uh, it's kind of a weird choice when it comes to film scoring, yet it's completely doable. It's a piece of software that I like composing in the most, and conventional wisdom is you do your best work where you're most comfortable. Yeah, hope this was helpful. Okay, uh, if you like this video, it'd be great if you could hit like. And if you have not done so already, now would be a great time to subscribe. It's free and you'll be notified the next time I make one of these videos. Take care.